privacy is important, whether for your business or for your family communications. Don't let your private calls be used in a big tech dragnet. Today we're going to be talking about using your own private Jitsi server to control your communications, whether that be for your family or for your business. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I hope you enjoy this beautiful backdrop today. This sunset is just so amazing. I've been enjoying it for the last couple of weeks. I wanted to share it with you guys as well. And hey, if we can take care of a video in a beautiful setting like this, why not? Especially since we're talking about video conferencing. I promise it's not a Jitsi green screen background. <laughs> but anyway, Jitsi is an excellent self-hosted conferencing system that is easy for anyone out there to use. Now, it can be used on a web browser or on a free app. There are desktop clients, there are apps for your Androids, for your uh, iPhones, your iPads, and even open source ones from the, uh, from the open source um, F-Droid. So you can grab those. So this is also an excellent solution for business. Now, on the business end, you might be spending a little bit more depending on how big your meetings are. On the family end, we can work on a Jitsi server for as little as $6 a month which is not a bad price to pay for privacy and end-to-end -end encryption when you're talking about communicating with your own family. Now, you are gonna need a domain name, you are going to need some form of hosting account, uh, and uh, if you don't have any of those, we have DigitalOcean affiliates and we have Namecheap affiliates. Now, the other factor about this is we get this guy set up, we are gonna password protect this so you can't set up a Jitsi server that everybody under their brother is going to use. So from here, we're gonna dive right on in and we're gonna jump on over to the computer and so that I can show you guys how to get everything set up. We're gonna walk through all of your different hosting requirements. We're gonna walk through just a number of, uh, of different factors that you need. We're gonna walk through the actual installation of our Jitsi server and then let you know how you can get everything set up for your passwords. And then finally, of course, we're gonna get into seeing how to access the server, the uh, get the web browsers going, get the apps going, all the server configuration changes. So with that, let's dive right on in. Here we'll get into the actual building out of the server. So first let's go ahead and talk briefly about the system requirements. Now these system requirements are way blown out of proportion. The biggest one is going to actually be the bit rate, not only of your personal internet connection, but also of the internet connection of the server itself. This is why you generally want to use a cloud server because they have bandwidths that will greatly exceed anything you have in a residential environment. Of course, if you're doing a self-hosting on a business environment, that's a different situation. We're going to mostly target the, the smaller creator, the smaller individual doing this. Um, those in the more tech industry, you'll be able to figure out the, the limitations and the changes. But here we just have a little bit about the uh, the bandwidths that you'll need to do 720p uh, video, which is HD. You need 25 kilobit per second. 4K is 10 megabit per second. So this is why you really have to be uh, aware of your internet connection. As far as what they say, they usually suggest 8 gigabytes of RAM. Now, I think what they have in mind here is something on par of what their server runs. Multiple conferences, hundreds of people on it. Uh, yeah, you might need eight gigabytes for that. We've actually done some pretty good testing on my server for a couple weeks, and we're only using one gigabyte, one CPU, and we don't even come close to 30% of our memory usage on that. So if you're using, if you're just talking about a small family or a small business environment where you're only going to have one or two people on a meeting at any given time, you're okay doing much, much lower than that. They say here for small meetings, you get away with four or test servers too. <laughs> my production server is one gigabyte. The other one that I ran in production for a while was a two gigabyte, but that was shared with multiple other websites and things like that. CPUs, they specifically say here, it doesn't really matter how many cores you have. 32 is not always useful. Uh, dedicated four cores should be enough. Again, I'm using one and we don't generally have a lot of problems. Maybe if we boosted it up, we might actually get our... Um, our cameras working better all the time, but that I find really depends on my internet connection than anything else. Disk usage, anything over 20 gigabytes is fine as long as you're not trying to record anything. Uh, we're not going to be talking about recording here, but just be aware you can record if you want to. 
Now, as we said, you need to get a domain name. So if you do not have a domain name, I'd recommend Namecheap. Uh, this is a brand new affiliate I have over here, Namecheap, tlm.li forward slash nc for Namecheap. So if you need to get a domain name, I'd get it over here. If you already have a domain name somewhere else, that's fine. You can use it. Now, as far as getting your domain name set up, I really can't walk you through that perfectly because it really completely depends on where it's at. Do you have the name server set up? Things like that. In general, if you have purchased a domain name as part of a hosting account, you're probably on cPanel. And on cPanel, we'll walk through exactly how to do it on cPanel. But here on Namecheap, if you just buy a domain, it's not tied to a control panel, then you can actually set it up over here. This is actually the help guide, and this will be in the article that is linked down below. Go to your domain list, go to your advanced DNS, and then your host records, and then you're going to add a new record for your domain name. So you're going to do, if you add just blog here, this is going to be blog at your domain name. So if you bought example.com and you add blog right here, that's going to be blog.example.com. Now, what you need to do is you need to start setting this up, but you're going to need to put the IP address of your server right here in this block. Now, the problem is, is you don't have that yet, but we need to get it all set up and ready for this because once your server starts the configuration process, you need this record pointed and going into your server in order for your server to be configured. Jitsi will not work on IP addresses and it must have that SSL properly configured. So getting the domain name right is important. So that is what we are going to do there. Now on cPanel, I'll walk you through this on cPanel because I think most people will have a cPanel. So you're going to go down into your domains and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new domain. So over here, creating a new domain, I'm going to call this meet.switchedtolinux.com and we're going to hit submit and then it will take a moment and now you'll see that we have meet.switchtolinux.com. Now what we're going to do is we need to go into our DNS records. So find your zone editor and then over here, find your main domain. Mine is switch to Linux, hit your manage. And then we're going to filter by meet. So here, the very first line item is meet.switchtolinux.com. We're going to need to change this host record with whatever our IP address is going to be. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stand here and be ready. Now, you need to go over, and we're going to create this utilizing the DigitalOcean uh, platform here. And uh, you can do this on a variety of platforms. The setup and configuration might be somewhat different. Most of these have a one-click install for Jitsi, and they may not be exactly the same, but if nothing else, this will get started. If you do not have a DigitalOcean account, you can use my affiliate, tlm.li forward slash doh for DigitalOcean hosting. That's going to get you $200 of credit good for 60 days. So you can try this out for free for 60 days if you want to and then keep it if it's useful. You're going to log into your menu and go down to Marketplace. When you click on Marketplace, you have a variety of different things. I mean, you can... Do you can have all sorts of fun with that $200 credit, by the way. I mean, there's so many fun things you can do. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to type Jitsi server, if I can spell Jitsi. Uh, so typing in Jitsi server, this is going to be the, the line that we get. Let's close that one. Redundant windows there. So what we're going to do here is this is going to walk you through the deployment of the system. And so... Uh, getting started after deployment. So first we're going to set our tutorial. It's telling us here that we have to push the domain. Now, of course, they say you can add the domain to your project and you can add it from there. I don't do that because DigitalOcean limits you to one domain. And then I just find it's easier to control domains other places and just point them to where I need to point them. We're going to need a terminal emulator. If you're on Linux, of course, you can just use your terminal. Mac also has a terminal. 
Uh, if you're on Windows, you need to install PuTTY. And then the settings down here are all different. Nothing of this is applicable anymore. DigitalOcean needs to change that, which is actually why I wrote the comprehensive guide on my website, because mine is up to date with 2024 standards. But what we're going to do is create the Jitsi server droplet here. And of course, it's going to default you to a big expensive droplet because DigitalOcean wants your money. Of course, first, you're going to select the best server for you. If you're in Australia, you probably want Sydney or London, obviously London. I'm here in the United States. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use the New York option. And then you can choose which data center you're using. Now, this really doesn't make a lot of difference unless you're trying to tie a bunch of different servers together. You're doing more complicated projects. Then everything needs to be in the same data center. But for a single standalone application, we don't need to worry about that. We're installing this on Ubuntu 2204, deal with it. Um, and then over here, just using the cheap basic plan is best. Now again, they default you to expensive stuff. I generally use the regular disc because I don't need the absolutely super fast, uh, much more expensive one. And again, for a, a server for a simple family, the smallest one we can get is this because of the disk size limitation. But this $6 a month one works fine. This is what we use on our Thursday shows. And it works fine. This is what I use to have private conferences with people. That's fine as well. Now we need to come down and decide if we're going to use an SSH key or a password. This is your preference. I personally use passwords. And the reason I do that is I have like four or five different computers I might be accessing this with. I do not want to go through the hassle of setting up multiple SSH keys. Um, and, you know, hey, there was an SSH key vulnerability not too long ago. I like complicated passwords. So we're just going to go ahead and use a complicated password here. Um, and so hopefully you can remember what your password is um, and store the password. You will not be able to get it. You will not be sent, sent an email with it. Uh, hopefully I can remember what that password was. I'm actually going to write a reminder down of what I just did. And now that we have all that set up, I personally, this is not one I have backups in my, um, in my uh, server. I'm not willing to pay the extra dollar 20 because if my server goes down, it takes me 10 minutes to put this thing back up. I'm not going to worry about it. We're not doing anything else funky. Um, improved monitoring. They, hey, sure. That's always good. That'll tell you how well things are going. And then this is, uh, I'm just going to type delete me Jitsi. Um, just so I know which one it is. <laughs> uh, you're going to want to type something like Jitsi server or whatever else. And then you can put any tags, anything like that. So we'll go ahead and create our droplet. Um, so now it is creating the droplet. And what we're going to do here is as this guy is spinning up, we're going to wait for this IP address to be formed. Once we get this IPv4 address, this is what we are going to drop into our zone editor. So we're going to pause the video here and come back when this is done configuring. And that was fast. So it was only about a minute. So here's the IP address that we want. So we're going to copy that. We're going to go back into our zone editor, edit our A record, save the record. Again, if you are doing this over here on um, Namecheap, that's going to be the record that goes in right here. So this would be meet. Just type meet, not the whole domain name, just type meet. And then the IP address is going to go in this value line over here and then hit this green check mark. And then that is going to update your account. So what we're going to do now is we have to get into the server. So what we're going to do is we need to boot up a terminal. And so I'm going to go ahead and do this and let's go ahead and zoom this guy in so you guys can see it a little bit better without me having to do funny stuff. Uh, let's do one more. There we are. All right. So now we're going to do an SSH and we're going to do root at that IP address. And this is going to ask you uh, first, do you want to save this? Sure. And then we're going to add our password. Okay. So once I add my password here, it'll let me into my server. And so what we'll see here is we're going to get information. Here's the instructions. Um, so to complete the setup, we're going to type this in here. 
So we're going to, I'm just going to copy this guy here to complete this uh, Jitsi setup. If and only if you agree to the Jitsi license. So make sure you have read the Jitsi license to agree with it. And we're going to go ahead and set this guy up. Okay, so what it's going to do now is it's going to run a full system install. And then it's going to add Jitsi. It's going to add a, um, uh, a basic DDoS protection service and uh, just a few other things, I think, for the monitoring stuff. So once this is done doing its thing here, then we'll come back um, and walk through the rest of the configuration. So during the update process, we have this guy here, configuration files available, installed version has currently been modified. Generally speaking, when you get one of these, you're going to keep the currently installed version, um, although it is possible that uh, we might need to make some changes elsewhere. And the next one, which services should be restarted? So these were the various services that were updated in the process. So we're not even going to bother with worrying about um, uh, about which services these are. We're just going to go ahead and restart all of those. If something isn't working right, hey, we can just reboot the whole system and it wouldn't be a problem. Now, this is where it's actually installing. It looks like it's installing the rest of the stuff that we need for Jitsi to work, just some of the back end things. This is why using a system like DigitalOcean is really useful. Now we need to know where is this going to be at. So this is our domain. So meet.switchedtolinux.com is my domain name. And now it's asking us about which certificate. So if you're buying a certificate somewhere else, you can, uh, you can use your own certificate. A self-signed certificate is not going to work well. You use it just for internal testing. Let's encrypt as best because these certificates are free anyway. Now, Let's Encrypt does require an email address. That's what this is here. This is not anything related to Jitsi. This is related to the Let's Encrypt. I just use a throwaway junk email address, although it is one that you are going to want to check from time to time because um, it's going to be an address that if there's something wrong with a certificate, it's going to send you an email from here. So let's we'll go ahead and do that. You can. Uh, so this is dial-up support, like uh, dial-in support for a phone. You would need a Jitsi as a service account. We're not going to worry about telephony systems, so I'm going to click no on this one. We don't need any of that. Okay, so now we'll just do some service restarts. Looks like nothing needed to be restarted. Nothing had changed. Okay, if you agree to Acme subscriber. Okay, so this is the Let's Encrypt. So we're just going to enter the same email address as before. Oop, I typed that wrong. Oh, well. All right. So now it says everything is set up. So let's go ahead and see if the Jitsi server is actually set up now or not. Okay. So let's just start a meeting called Bob. Now, here's the thing about the DigitalOcean script um, is that, uh, let's see, we're going to do, not that one, that's the main microphone we're recording on. I'll do that one, allow that, and camera, well, that's microphone, allow that. Okay, now what you're going to see here is that it's working, but it asks for a username. That's something that apparently has been updated either in DigitalOcean script or in Jitsi's install, that by default now it requires authentication, but there is no user created. That is why we created this separate guide, because this is like, hey, optional. See, you used to install Jitsi and everything was... A uh, guest by default. Now things require passwords by default. And so what we need to do is we need to set up a user account. Now everything is all set. So that first line that it says down here uh, where you need to edit this file and change this to internal plane, that's actually already set up in the configuration file. So all it's need for us to do right now is actually run this command, which is giving us the... Um, uh, this is giving us the information we need to create the account. So what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and register our user. And, hey, let's just, out of fun, we'll just call our user Bob, right? Call our user Bob, and then we need to tell it what server it is using. 
And so Bob needs registered for meet.switchtolinux.com. And then we need to give it the password and we're going to give this guy the most secure password you've ever seen. Actually, let's just do one, two, three, four, five, the type of password an idiot would have on his luggage. All right, so now when we go into our server, actually we will need to restart our server before we do anything. So this is what we need to restart our server. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. And once we do that, now we will go back to our server here. We'll just refresh this just in case the page didn't get set up right. And we'll enter Bob and one, two, three, four, five. And that'll let us in. All right. So now that we are led into our server, then um, let's see if it's finding our camera or not. Uh, once it lets us into our server here, uh, then I think it's not capturing the camera, but just because of my record settings. Sometimes when you're already recording a video with a screen capture, everything else does odd things. Uh, but it lets me in. The problem is, is now everybody is going to need a login to get into there. And so we don't really want that to happen. Let me go ahead and reboot. Or, uh, we're going to come back into this again. go we'll restart the Bob meeting and let's see we should be doing this one and Bob one two three four five okay it's still not capturing my audio stuff I'm pretty sure that that's either because of my firewall settings on my browser or it's possibly because of the uh, the fact we're recording, um, but we'll uh, we'll walk around down that mode in a minute. This is a test server that we're spinning up here real quick, um, and we're going to be testing out the client anyway in a moment. So with that, um, what we're going to do here is we want to configure our server so that our guests can use it without having a password. So to create a meeting, you'll require the password. But in order to um, uh, in order to join a meeting that's already in progress, you will not have to create one. So we need to edit a few files. The first one is our file over here, uh, which is at Etsy Prosody Conf dot Avail, and we're just going to go to our domain meet dot switched to linux.com.cfg.lua. Uh, really? Permission denied. I am a root. Why are you giving me permission denial? Because I do have to put a nano in front of that. That's why. <laughs> of course we have to do that. All right. So this gives us a lot of information that we have. So what we need to do is we need to go to the bottom of the file and we need to um, we need to tell the system that we are enabling the um, virtual servers. So we're going to add our guest. It's a virtual host guest dot meet dot switched to Linux dot com. And authentication is anonymous and C2S is set at false. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'm just going to put an extra space in there. Okay, so we're going to change that. But there is still a little bit more we need to do. We need to enable the use of guests. So we have another file we need to edit. Uh, let me clear. I'm going clear, to clear the screen here so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to put in nano first this time. Now here we are editing the file, which is an Etsy Jitsi meet, and then our server URL dash config.js. 
And then here we are going to be looking for the line that says anonymous and we need to uncomment that line. And let's just go ahead and use the where is here. Okay, so this is the anon domain. So we need to cross this guy out here and then we need to turn in our guest dot meet dot switched to Linux dot com. And that should set that up there. So we're going to save that file there. And then the next thing we need to do now, this is one that has changed according to some of the other guides is we need to create a file. It used to be here and you needed to add something to it, but the file is no longer uh, installed by default. And that is Etsy Jitsi Jifco dash SIP communicator dot properties. So you'll see that this is a new file. And what we need to do is we need to set our Jitsi to run to this server. Okay, exit there, save that one. And now we are going to reboot all of our services again. I'm just gonna system restart all of our server settings. And now we should have the ability to access our server. We'll test it again on the web browser. I will also note that Jitsi doesn't always work the best under Firefox. That could also be some of our issues because actually was we were doing some initial testing, some versions of Firefox, um, uh, some versions of Firefox were not working correctly. Uh, there we are. Now we are waiting for a moderator. So now Bob can log in under our moderation guy here. So now you can see that the conference is up and it looks as though the camera and everything was set up. So those are the steps that you need. And now the way this is set up, everybody should um, be able to access this. And then once a moderator is in here, nobody else uh, will uh, require a password to get in here. Just the first person that gets in here. And then as far as how this works, it's just very easy. Select background, show whiteboard, noise suppression, share video, um, there's settings or security options. You do actually have the option uh, for security for a lobby. You do have the option to add a password. So those are fun options that we have. Uh, we also have under, let's see, is it under settings? I think uh, we actually do have, I got to remember exactly where it is. I thought it was under security. Uh, somewhere in your settings is the option to enable the end-to-end -end encrypted. It's not end-to-end -end encrypted everywhere by default just because it doesn't always work as well. Um, but that being said, um, there is a setting and it will cause a few issues on some settings. I thought it was under security, but maybe it's not. Oh, well. Uh, dig around. You'll find it in there somewhere. Uh, but that is how that works. Now there's one more thing we want to do, and that is we want to look at running the desktop clients. Now, whether you're using the app or you're using the desktop clients, uh, they all work the same way. There's one setting we need to change. So this is the Flatpak version. You can install it. They have a Windows, Mac. They have a variety of native Linux ones, dev packages, RPMs. They have the flat pack. As far as your apps, your Android, your more privacy focused Android guides, you can grab it from F Droid. Otherwise, you can get it from the Google Play Store and in the Apple Store. So if you're on a tablet, the only thing you're going to need to do on all of those is just change the server URL. So you're going to go to the domain name that we have created with this. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash meet dot switch to Linux dot com. Once that is set up, now anything that we do inside of here is going to be done uh, much the same way. And um, it's going to default everything to being your server. So we'll just do Bob. 
and we'll enter that. I don't know why I'm on a Bob kick today. So we need to log in as Bob with the idiot's password for his luggage. Get ourselves logged in there. And that will create the account. And now we have the option over here. So you see we have a couple, few different options in there. So moderators can add the password. And we have share video. Am I not a moderator? Hmm. Look like I might be missing uh, some moderation options. There's that, there's that, notifications, profile, email, there are shortcuts, all sorts of a variety of different things. So there is, uh, there is what we have over here as far as our settings here inside the Jitsi client. I think uh, the security settings might be off because the um, this is an older version of the client. <laughs> the, I was using the newer version of the client on the other testings. So anyway, there is our setup with all of our apps. Our Jitsi server is now set up, and this is going to cost us 6 bucks a month, which is a really good price to protect your privacy and keep everyone safe. So that is what we have. And then you can see here is our stats. You can see our bandwidth peaked up as far as 6 Mbps. CPU usage spiked up there to 55%, but it dropped back down, uh, down to almost nothing. So that is a very nice system, very nice server. And uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up the video here. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope that the guide was comprehensive enough to help you along. Again, the affiliate links that we have, DigitalOcean, tlm.li forward slash do. This is going to get you $200 credit good for 60 days. You can use that to test out your Jitsi server. We also have a Namecheap affiliate. If you do not have a domain name, you can go ahead and use that tlm.li forward slash nc. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Share this far and wide and let all of your family know, hey, we're going to try something new for our conferences or for your business. Hey, we're going to send you the conference link. It's going to work pretty well. It's pretty easy. People are going to be able to figure it out. So with that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.